uh, good evening, everyone, all of you here. Uh, my name is Ulysses Dietz. I'm the chief curator at the Newark Museum and the curator of decorative arts and the curator of jewelry, which is why I'm here. And I have the distinct honor and anxious pleasure of interviewing Vered Kaminsky, uh, uh, one of the most important or the most important I, I don't want to make anybody angry, but uh, uh, contemporary studio jewelers in Israel, uh, known well in this country uh, and abroad, someone I've known for many years. Uh, and uh, I'm, I want to talk to her about her process, about her current work, but being a curator and being involved in history, I have to uh, delve back into the past a little bit because I see echoes of earlier things in the, in the material here to this evening. And, uh, the piece of yours that sticks in my mind most from the exhibition Women's Tales uh, of some years ago, I've even lost track of it, it was at the Newark Museum and then uh, yes. I've even forgotten where it was. Uh, so. It started out at Racine. Oh, at the Racine Art Museum and then at the Newark Museum and eventually at the Israel Museum. Yes. And, um, and you're no stranger to Jerusalem. And, the piece that the Newark Museum acquired from that is, was based on a group of stones that you picked up in Jerusalem and then caged in gold wire, which has been featured in that catalog and in your other catalog, your big catalog resume. And the echoes of that are here, this, this theme of stone and the sort of connection of stone, which is ancient, but still there, still alive today, uh, and with the ancient city of Jerusalem, and I noticed that you sort of dismiss Tel Aviv as this modern place, and Jerusalem is where your heart is. Uh, so it's a fun but, place. Hmm? It's a fun place. It's a f oh, because it's fun? No, it's not serious. <laughs> oh, oh, Tel Aviv is frivolous, huh? Anyway, we won't. That's, <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm in New Jersey, and New York's right there, so we're not going to go into these geopolitical things. But, um, but the stones, talk. talk f well, I, there are many things I want you to talk about, but. Talk first about the, the meaning of the stones and how that kind of found object mm -hmm. first began to enter your work. Yeah, stones, as everybody knows, it's one of the main uh, materials used in jewelry since ever, or that what's left because other materials uh, disappeared with the time. Stones and metal, and usually the stone w were important because people gave value to it because, on belie because of beliefs and um, a magic a power that they gave them. And the, the metal usually, um, yeah. You stay there, I'm gonna grab things yeah. gently because I'm a curator and I know what I'm doing, right? Yeah, for example, the... the <laughs> so, I mean, as you were saying that, oh, the, so the lapis lazuli and the yeah. turquoise both of, both of which are associated with it antiquity. Was very, it was very important in Egypt. And the, As was turquoise. Yes. And they bro brought it from uh, Afghanistan. Or I don't, it was not there. They bring it from other places because it was important because, I don't know why, but I, I imagine because um, belief of God, which is in the sky, the sky is blue, or things like this, or the water of the sea and the shiny of the gold, which is the sun, maybe, mm -hmm. in, on Earth. So in, so in ancient Egypt, but in Tibet, in Hinduism, mm -hmm. all at the same time, yeah. all these stones mean actually the same know, thing to I all know. these different cultures. So that's the nerdy curator speaking. For example, uh, this uh, eyes, these eyes which you see here and there in, in my work, the blue eyes, mm -hmm. which are a sign of protection of God. And in the Middle East, we don't have blue eyes, but we still have this magic eye that uh, protects us. Because God is in the sky, the sky is blue, or something like this. I don't know. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if anybody knows exactly, but... So, so the transition, I'm trying to... So you've got, literally, you've got a piece of stone. Yeah. So it's sort of, although you didn't find this on the ground. No, I bought it. <laughs> I don't think you find chunks of lapis floating around. But where, this I found on the ground in, oh, the, in the Central Park New York. Well, no, here, so here we have the other mythic stone. Uh, actually, I was, th this, is, this is a very classic stone that everybody who lives in New York should know. This is 
central New York schist. This is what all the boulders in Central Park are made out of. And it has, it's also related to the kind of stone that a great lot of early Indian sculptures are made out of. It's very hard yeah. and it doesn't wear away. It lasts forever. It doesn't it's acid, hard, but it's acid not, rain. Uh, but it's not strong. It's, it's brittle. It shatters because of all the, mm -hmm. whatever that sparkly stuff is. So, so what's the, 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 so how did you make the step from stones, um, the sort of most elemental jewelry material, to, yeah. to this, um, the, uh, the, the cement and concrete The cement material. is the replacement of the stones because you can use it easily as in houses. You use uh, cement, you use the uh, concrete because you can cast it instead of cutting the stone from the hill and it's hard work. So these little Star of David brooches I love because they feel like terrazzo floors and yes. that's what you're, mm -hmm. but it's something that's very commonplace yes. in a newer building. Uh, the in Israel, every house has them. And, has and as I was saying, these are very big in places like Miami and, and South Florida mm -hmm. too. These terrazzo floors countries. are very modern or very sort of post-World War II. And so, and, but how does that differ from pieces like this? Now these are, you, you explained the process of these. Mm -hmm. These look like tessellated floors. And this is an ancient pattern that goes back, you yes. see it in Rome. We see them a lot in Tel Aviv, this kind of uh, floor tiles. But done in yellow, stone. Yellow, No, not in stones, in concrete. Oh, done in concrete in the mm -hmm. same, in the in, same way. Yeah. And this is, so this is cement. Yes. Uh, is this the same material on the back? Yeah, this is white cement with pigments, and this is a gray cement at the back. And so this, so this is so sort of reflecting the stones that you pick up off the mm -hmm. ground or buy. But there is a big, uh, <laughs> big process that's sort of that missing here. But anyway, I came back to concrete after many years that I didn't work with it because I, I tried to make a sand in the bottle, like you see in the bracelet oh. there. Yes, I, I, I want to get to that, but I'm too far to walk over there, yeah, but I'm not quite ready here. to take one, here, so hold here. one there. No, no, it's, it's here. Because, because oh, oh, well, this is a fragment yeah. of one. So the, well, actually, so hand me one then, Patty. Because it's, that's the, it's the same meaning. People uh, sell it. Because this, this whole series it. is the sand in the bottle series. Yes, but uh, usually uh, the Bedouins send it, uh, sell it in the desert where they produce them. As a so, souvenir. So this is inspired by those souvenirs yes. which cropped up for the first time in the 19th century at World's Fairs. Yeah. And then I don't know if they came from Palestine originally, from the Holy mm -hmm. Land, to a, for American tourists, but you could buy these scenic landscapes in bottles and they still exist from mm -hmm. the 19th century. And I've never quite understood how they were one of these curiosities how that were huge make? tourist attractions. 150 years ago in, in the United States, mm -hmm. but, they, but they were imported from the Middle East, and so that's what, are they still being made? Yes. Is this something that's in still going Jordan, on? In Jordan, I know they're doing it. So in this one, you've got, you, I mean, you obviously see the yeah, contour I, of the bottle, but, but so I, I how did you decide to riff on that? I tried to do the, them without the battle, to make the sand in the battle without the battle, so mm -hmm. I need concrete to glue the sand. So I, I learned to make this technique that the Bedouins do by looking at YouTube. And I... <laughs> and their modern world in truth, there we are. <laughs> and, but I went to the desert to collect the sand of different colors. And I tried to do it and it was very hard. I, made, I tried different techniques, not only the same technique they use because when it's concrete, it doesn't work the same way. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult. So I, I tried to do it flat, like the floor tiles, mm -hmm. and then bend it when it was still soft. So it's all changed. It's not easy anyway. But uh, um, then I understood that what's uh, the drawings on these battles, the drawings are um, landscapes of the desert. And uh, I understood that it's not really a landscape, it's a drawing of a landscape, which is the reflection of what's surrounding the, where you are standing. And then I, I understood that what I'm doing many years already, it's a reflection of our surrounding, like the bracelet of this, of Leonor. You see? <laughs> 
Aha, with, I with, see. with the faces, it's mm. like mirror. Because when I made the group of the bubbles, soap, the soap bubbles, it was also has effect of mirror. Mm -hmm. So you see your face, like you see it here. I see, yeah. Uh, so it's a mirror image. And sort of yeah. this is, so this is a 360 degree view yes. turned inside out. Yeah, and the, and the horizon is here at the middle instead of around you. So, but when, when did you, now, I'm, I'm tripping over my own questions because yes, I so have several I want to ask because I, I, to I, know that, I know that these, because there's the sort of landscape issue and I love these because of that landscape thing. Mm -hmm. So should we go there first or should I go back over here onto these more scenic ones? <laughs> so I actually just want, I'll just grab this because I thought these were so funny. They looked so familiar and I could, this is, this is a kind of a landscape mm -hmm. that isn't about the desert. This is very much an urban landscape. Yes. As you explained to me that these are traffic islands yes. in the middle of the intersections. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's I instinctively joke. knew what they were, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And I love that idea because that's pretty. It's a joke. It, it is. <laughs> so, it, we play, as, as much we play with urban sand life here. Is. Uh, so now to sort of go back to the, I'll try not to fall over my cord. I'll shuffle gracefully over here. So dealing with these, let's go, let's look at these sort mm -hmm. of mandala-like pieces. Yeah. Uh, but so you were telling me that the process involved in these, and I have a purpose mm -hmm. in asking you this, it's not random. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now all tangled up in my cord. I have no idea where, where'd it go? Oh, there. <laughs> I just don't want to fall or, no, 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 let's try not to fall. <laughs> because, but this was about, is the, the process, it's almost like a, uh, a, a cloisonne process. And the reason mm -hmm. I was intrigued by that, of course I'd find one that mm -hmm. actually looked more like it, but, but uh, this which has, is like a, it's like a tile floor pattern. Yes. All done with these very finely put together. This, this mm -hmm. is silver? Yes. And, and this, of course, to me evokes the work you were doing back when you were a student in Paris, where you were starting yes. out, when you were learning mm -hmm. this sort of very precise, mm -hmm kind of obsessively precise, which I love. That's mm -hmm. really very me. Uh, metal work. Exactly. And that you, so you actually use this as the, as the uh, template for these, uh, for these inlaid concrete pieces, not, cement pieces, uh, and then you pull it out? Not always. Sometimes, yes. And here, for example, I did it without a frame, just put oh, the So hand. this is just fr freehand. And freehand, now, exactly. Now, how do you color the different sands? Or the, the, With pigments. So these are, these are, and so this, wait a minute, now I'm confusing myself. So this is, these were, are these pigmented as well? Uh, no. So these are the natural mm -hmm. sand materials, but these are pigments yes. that you've mixed into the cement. Yeah. In India also they put pigments mm -hmm. when they do the mandalas. Well, yes. Oh, so but this is, and this is yet another, we've already referred to Tibet once here. Mm -hmm. So this is. The idea of those sand mandalas, which yes. are mm -hmm. kind of ancient but ephemeral, which I've seen, exactly. I've witnessed uh, being done right in, right here in New Jersey. Really? And so you're doing this with, but you're not it's, it's literally made, doing it's it It's made with like sand. this, backside. I put uh, p um, drops of color, mm -hmm. colored cement in different places. I wait a little bit, I put more and more, and then I cover it with gray concrete with uh, the pins. Without messing it up? Um, I can wait. I can, do, I can wait even a year and do it later. So you, but these, you let these set, so they become somewhat solid? Maybe, I don't, I don't really rem remember because I did it in so many different <laughs> ways and different time. It's like cooking without the recipe. <laughs> That seems like I'm repeating myself. I'm trying to think. And of I have there. another technique which mm. I use here, like you play uh, on the oh, beach oh, with yes, the yes. sand. Oh yes, yes, the little the sand drips. Yes. Now, do you do anything to this, or you just do you yeah, fire I this? I did it exactly. But do you no. let it dry? Is this I is put just it dry? on sand, so when I drop the concrete, it became hard very quickly, exactly like you do on the beach. So the concrete just self hardens. You don't have to do it cures mm -hmm. itself, so you don't yeah. have to worry about it. Now tell me, because I was I've seen these. There are several little groups of camels and donkeys, mm -hmm. but but I'm particularly smitten with the ones behind <laughs> our artist friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That that so. 
These are almost like found objects lurking around Jerusalem and have been yes, souvenirs. for well over a century and a half anyway, these mm -hmm. little souvenirs of, of beasts of burden. And so, so what struck you to pick those and to start u using them as a motif it's for what I children? see around me. And also, you know, it's, uh, it's like the stones that people want to have them as souvenir from a trip or from a place they were in. And people do pick up stones. I mean, yeah. that was sort of yes. geological, I mean, souvenir geological collections where you would label a place where it came from. Yes. I've also seen uh, science collections where mm -hmm. you have sand from different places. Yes. Bottles of water from the Jordan River are actually exactly. quite big oh, as air tourists. from Israel. <laughs> oh, air? Well, air, I hadn't noticed no. air before. <laughs> in, a, in a conserve box, you know? Ah. <laughs> um, I'll gracefully work my way back here. So, I, and I'm very intrigued by these because these just the little pebbles that sort of emphasize mm -hmm. the notion of the, the random found pebble. But, but these are much more intentional. And yes. talk about these, these lockets, these pendants, which yeah. you call stone lockets because they've been cleaved mm -hmm. in two parts. Yeah. So talk about those. I, start, I mean, they're, they're so very simple, but they have... I start, I start broke the stones after I um, made, uh, made stones of silver, I casted silver right, which is at the form of a stone. And when it was casted, I could repeat it. And when it was repeated, I could uh, make it like this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after working, after, after replacing stones by metal, I came back to stones and I uh, broke them. And then so, I found... So how do you, I mean, I know this sounds idiotic. How? But you yeah. just, a, I, I you put use a chisel or you just hit between it? Between two chisels. So you're so very careful, you're cleaving it as if it's a gemstone. You're being very careful because you want uh, a clean break. I did so many, th some of them succeed. And uh, in every stone... They all succeed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in every stone you find a secret. And you don't know what's inside and you become... Uh, Stone, stoneaholic. <laughs> yes. You can't stop doing it because a rock hound is what we call them here. <laughs> so now this looks like a piece of tiger eye. Exactly. So I buy, you, I so buy on them. the outside it's just gray, and that's the concrete on the yes. back. No, but it you, was but polished. You, I, but you, I bought it polished and I cut it. Ah. It was polished. I bought I bought it as a polished stone. And, and then, but you, you, know but, the, you but you broke it in half. Yes. And you got, and you were talking to me about. It was interesting because it's not just that yeah. you've got this mirror image. The mirror image, but is you've also with got the, the three-dimensional. Yes. You've got the with volume. the color. You have a mirror image, but from the three-dimensional point of view, it's negative positive mm -hmm. on the same time. So it's difficult to understand. Just when you see it, <laughs> you can understand it. Well, and it's sort of it's one of those things that sort of it's easy to understand when you point it out but it might not leap out at you that you, you're, there's a lot of sort of intuitive feel for the material in these that mm -hmm. I'm not sure most people think of when they kick a pebble across the street as they're walking mm -hmm. around. But I, I love these particularly with the, the pendants that are sort of, there's it's something like that locus. makes you think this gets very kind of, you know, those, the, the, the lockets that are separated, that they only function when they're together. I mean, this is out of mm, yeah. ancient sort of mystical romance. You see, I based, you on, see my mind I based on the history of jewelry, of how people uh, use jewelry for. This, I have a cartoon in my office, and it shows a caveman standing next to his wife, and she's got a big rock on a thong, and she's like this, and he says, I don't think this jewelry thing's going to work. <laughs> But you see, you found a way to make it wearable. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like me to point out and ask you about? I I'm just trying to think. To, we've covered I, a lot I, of ground, but I'm not sure it's been coherent. Yeah. Um, but then why be coherent now, so late in my career? These two. Now, it was interesting. You talked about using the, the, frame. the, the framework in these two pieces. Yeah. So I used the frame as... We do in the floor tiles, and here I could get it out, and here it was stuck. 
in the concrete. Because so it was it, once the it was too small. The, the cells were very small and the concrete didn't uh, go out. Didn't want to leave. Yeah, exactly. So you and left it in and do you, do you polish the surface yes. afterward? So mm -hmm. this is, so that becomes like a cloisonne enamel then. Exactly. It's, the same. it's exactly the Where same. Where did I get these ones there? And the same with these, but these were more intentional because you sort of, or did you, you just figured you weren't going to No, no, fight I it. wanted to take it out, but it, I but couldn't. It didn't. Yeah. And yet it's beautiful. It's a nice effect. That's one of those happy accidents from working. And that reminded me because that, that's when I went back to this. So this, this was really then just intended to be one of your metal pieces with a little uh -huh. bit of this terrazzo yeah. floor in it. Yeah, it's the, it's the form of a flower which is also interesting because why people decorate themselves, themselves with flowers? Why they think flower is beautiful? I talk about it at my lecture that the, the forms and the colors of flowers meant to attract animals, mm -hmm. insects. So why we think it's beautiful and we decorate with this. And then we so interpret beauty as something other than food or some other kind of attraction, but th then, it be then it takes on meaning for us as humans be simply because of the beauty. The beauty but makes what, it... Why it's, why it's but considered why? as beautiful? Well... It's not obvious. Well, no, it's not, but it's sort of, it's the same way. Why do we wear jewelry? What's that instinct to ornament? No, so it's not, it's nothing to do with beauty. Beauty is, came after. First, people use, use it for a certain purpose, for example to um, protect themselves from bad eye or, sin or, or yeah, but magically. Or they, they gave uh, importance by beliefs of things. For example, the ring of the king, okay? That was uh, his uh, star. Mm -hmm, the seal, identity. the signet. It was identity card. Mm -hmm. And after, now you can go in every shop, you see rings with the form of this uh, stamp uh, yeah, ring. The Why? Signet, what yeah. It's not, it's beautiful because it was important before. Mm -hmm. And many things developed ah, like this. But people who write about colored stones, the reason the stones are important mm -hmm. is that they're beautiful and unexpected. Ah. So the beauty is what starts it. And uh, I heard someone talk ah. about, was talking about finding that rubies. And he said the first person who found a ruby crystal in a riverbed thought it was magic from the gods, so that made it instantly important and magical. And then, so the beauty so of it was... the beauty, but why? So, I so don't that's like chicken and the we, egg. <laughs> no, I don't think so, because we, everything um, considered as beauty if it's uh, for survival. But this is not uh, for survival. Why, it's, why we think it's beauty? Well, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't sign on to do philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, a, it's me, a, me neither. Because, because it, is, it is interesting. Because humans are the only creatures who intellectualize the idea of beauty, and we assume that flowers are beautiful for us. But, but the, fact, the bower, the bower bird, the bower bird I was she brings blue that. stones to to show her partner. Yeah, and, and they're well, anyway. <laughs> Now we're, now we're getting into a, a, into a natural history argument, but you're right, that I was thinking that, but there, there aren't a lot of animals that do that. No. Crows like to steal shiny things, so there is... But the peacock. Uh, peacock. Peacock. But are they aware of what they look like? Anyway. <laughs> now we've gone way off the rails on the topic here. So, should, can we ask people questions? I point out that the piece you picked up over these two mm -hmm. that you spoke about, were much earlier pieces. They're from 91. Oh, so these are early pieces. Yeah. They don't just echo your early pieces. They yes, are. they are. They're from the, f the beginning of the 90s. Yeah. yeah. And also, and also the, the toys there. When my oh, child so, was so, so small. The, the things cast from your son's toys. Mm -hmm. and the, so th these are all early pieces? Yeah. Oh, okay. From the beginning of the well, 90s. That's why they look familiar to me. Uh, <laughs> the second necklace in. Okay. Right. Um, and this too? Um, this part is uh, older and then I took it from my from somewhere and I add the other part to it. So what are these cast from? Hmm? What are these? Are they, it's olives brains. 
They are all pits. Yes, That's you know, in the old city, crazy. you can find the uh, 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 beads necklaces made of olive grains, and you can find also necklaces, bead necklaces with only the wood shaped as, you know, just uh, right. round, like. Yeah. But of course, it but came after and the. And these are cast in the cement. Yes. But these, I remember, your sort of wire the, and stuff. Yes. yes. You see the, the metal here mesh. used to set the stones as many times in jewelry mm -hmm. because it's softer so it, you can hold the stones with the metal. But when you have mm -hmm. concrete you don't need metal anymore. <laughs> now this cement too? Yes. With the, just a different color? Mm -hmm. With pigments. So Patty, should we ask some questions? Yeah. or? No. Nope. Well, Thank you. I think we'll let you free Thank and you. You talk to your fans face to face. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I was at her lecture at Brooklyn Metalworks the other night. So after hearing her lecture, it was really great to see. Um, the work here. She just has a lot of input and she uses all of all of the input to do what she's doing. <laughs> One of the surprising things is how light everything is even though it's made of concrete and sand. Everything is very very lightweight so it's very easy to wear uh, which I, and jewelry is very important. Yeah I'm I think Verit is a master of her craft. Um, I'm amazed at what she sees and the vision she has for what she sees and how she can make such beautiful pieces with found objects as well as making something that looks like a found object. It never occurred to me to make uh, fractures of stones or take cement and, and make it into something so beautiful the way she does. I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. The range of work that she has here as I was just saying that this one piece here in particular reminds me of a Japanese print. I'm seeing so many different things in each one of her pieces. I never would have thought that that was a traffic pattern. It looks more like a dartboard to me, yeah. but it's just absolutely phenomenal. I think the work is amazing. I love the feel, I'm a very tactile person, so I love the different feels, the different textures that her work has. So this is a piece from a show that Verid um, had, that was showing at the Newark Museum. And I fell in love with the piece because her ability to work with such fine metal, solder it together, and make faces. I've never seen anyone do such incredibly detailed work with soldering. And I just, I had to have it because I was so impressed with her level of expertise in handling the metal and also making beautiful expressive faces.